Well, hello again. Here's another uh, yes or no question for your consideration. <laughs> um, this one was really big uh, 30, 40 years ago, less so now, uh, but still in the context of history, a fascinating one. Uh, and it's this, uh, was Richard Nixon, was Nixon a bad president? Well, as most of us know, uh, Nixon was the 37th president of the United States from uh, 1969 to 1974 uh, when he resigned the presidency in the face uh, of an almost certain impeachment and conviction for obstruction of justice. But this was a man with a remarkable career. He certainly did a lot. He was during the Second World War, he was in the Air Transport Command of the South Pacific. Uh, <clears throat> right after the war, he came back and successfully ran for Congress for the House of Representatives. Uh, he gained a reputation as being a fervent anti-communist uh, at a time when uh, communism was a, a supreme political issue in America, whether you were <laughs> for it or against it. Uh, he subsequently uh, ran a very tough, almost Trump-like campaign uh, for the Senate and uh, achieved a seat in the Senate, was then picked by Eisenhower to be his running mate for Eisenhower's successful bid for the presidency uh, and uh, was Eisenhower's vice president for both of his terms, 1952 to 1960. Uh, he then uh, took on uh, John Kennedy uh, for the presidential election. He was the Republican nominee, close, close election, uh, quite a controversial one. Uh, there was a suggestion of a lot of uh, corruption in the voting process, dead people voting, that kind of thing. Yeah, he lost. He then subsequently ran for the governorship of California in 62, lost that, and became quite embittered uh, and made a very kind of self-pitying speech. I think his words were, you won't have Nixon to kick around anymore. So that was 62. Um, he then joined a very prestigious uh, famous Wall Street law firm. Nixon, of course, was a lawyer uh, and did very well out of that, uh, both financially and in terms of making a lot of rich friends <laughs> and uh, smart people who uh, collectively uh, would uh, be of great help to him. And in 1968, he, he ran for the presidency and was elected at a landslide. Nixon was a very uh, smart and capable person and therefore, you know, a pretty effective campaigner despite his obvious uh, personality <laughs> defects. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, of course, he was uh, forced to resign in, in uh, 1974. Uh, I remember watching his resignation speech. At the, uh, I was sitting in the Harvard Club having a cup of coffee and he came on television. And after that, after his resignation, in the 20 years between the resignation and his death in 1994, uh, he wrote, I think, 10 books, one of which was his memoir. He uh, became a kind of an elder statesman, not just to the Republican Party, but to the uh, administration uh, in general, uh, undergone quite a rehabilitation, principally through his brains and insights, and particularly in foreign policy. Uh, even though he had been uh, uh, shamed. But, you know, what, <laughs> what tenacity to somehow continue to rehabilitate himself. Well, that's, that's Nixon's story. Now, um, then as now, uh, there are those who would say he was a terrible president. Others would say he was a very good president. A really wide difference of opinion. So let's look at the views. Um, so the question is, was Nixon a bad president? Okay, let's start with the yes people, those who would say he was a bad president. Well, of course, the uh, seminal uh, 
event in his career was the Watergate break-in uh, and uh, his uh, efforts uh, to uh, hide what had happened, uh, which eventually led not only to uh, sending in um, CIA operatives to uh, try and spy on the uh, Democratic Party and so forth uh, relative to the midterm elections uh, coming up in 1974, uh, but, but also his uh, intense, uh, almost criminal obsession with uh, making sure nobody found out about it, lying about it, and so forth. In any case, he got caught. Um, and a bit like uh, Clinton and his discussion of his sex life, uh, everybody saw through it. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, the votes were there in, in the Senate, and so he knew that he would be not only impeached, but, uh, but convicted in the Senate, and, and thus he resigned. Uh, that's a pretty awful thing. He's the only president of the United States ever to have resigned. Uh, indeed, one of the great black marks against him. Number two, and probably one of the reasons uh, why all of this happened with Watergate was that uh, Nixon's, uh, Nixon had a real flawed personality. He was, uh, he was uh, racist, he, was, he can be an unpleasant person, vindictive, self-pitying, uh, the kind of person, although you would admire his, uh, his brains, he's probably one of the brightest presidents of the 20th century, uh, but nonetheless a, a pretty unpleasant person. You, you, you probably would have difficulty uh, making friends with him if you had been his uh, next door neighbor. Uh, so not a nice person. Uh, next, you have to worry about his uh, judgment uh, in uh, appointing Spiro Agnew as a running mate. I think it was, from what I understand, done for political, completely political reasons, a balance of geography and that kind of thing. But in the event, Spiro Agnew, although a colorful sort of character, the former governor of Maryland, turned out basically to be a pretty sleazy character, a crook, uh, and uh, a chap who had uh, visits of uh, local dignitaries to his gubernatorial office with bags full of money, that kind of thing. You know, uh, <laughs> Banana Republic stuff, really. And Spiro had to resign, uh, and so Nixon was without a vice president, which is why uh, when Nixon resigned, there was no vice president to take over, and so uh, per the requirements of the Constitution, the uh, Speaker of the House, Gerald Ford, took over as president, whom I met, by the way. Okay, well, uh, his uh, judgment notwithstanding, Spiro Agnew was awful, so we, we can really uh, uh, hold that against him. Uh, next, uh, he was seen to have been uh, pretty underhanded in dealing with the uh, Vietnamese peace talks going on in Paris. He is said to have told the Vietnamese to, to uh, strike off and, and that he could get a better deal when he was uh, re-elected. Uh, some view that as kind of treason, but again, it, it, it's pretty unpleasant stuff, the sort of thing you hide. Again, we've seen some of this stuff, uh, you know, the complicity of the Russians, for instance, uh, in uh, the last two presidential elections. Uh, so it's the kind of stuff that goes on, but you really don't want to get caught doing it. And uh, for many, he was uh, roundly condemned for this. Uh, next, he uh, associated himself with some uh, unsavory people on the world stage. He is known to have offered uh, military and other kinds of support, both to the Shah of Iran, uh, who himself was a pretty awful character, replaced by somebody who wasn't much better, but, but there it is, the world of uh, high-powered politics, uh, as well as to the apartheid uh, regime in South Africa. Well, a lot of people really didn't like that. Okay, and finally, um, because of his embarrassment over Watergate and the whole problem which led to his resignation, he did definitely damage the party, the GOP, the Republican Party, and 
and uh, a number of congressmen in the midterm elections in in 1974 attributed their loss to the to the besmirching of the uh, the party's reputation under Nixon. So that to politicians, of course, is the unforgivable sin. So there it is. That, that, that's the bill of particulars about uh, what a you know what a dreadful uh, person uh, Nixon was, uh, and uh, a lot of people really despise him for that. And and, uh, and many judge him to be one of the worst presidents. Okay, what about the other side, the group uh, that say, uh, you know, Nixon was actually a good president. Apart from his uh, late fall from grace, he actually did a very good job. Well, to begin with, I suppose his most uh, stunning achievement was to open up a dialogue with both uh, China and the Soviet Union. He, he famously visited China uh, with, uh, uh, with his partner in diplomacy, Henry Kissinger, uh, and uh, really uh, opened up the relationship uh, in a way that hadn't been done before. He was the first American president to, to visit China, and, and he's uh, given very uh, great credit for that. And similarly, uh, he had discussions with, uh, with uh, party chairman Brezhnev in the Soviet Union. Uh, one wonders about Brezhnev as a negotiating opponent uh, because he was uh, allegedly actually dead for a while while he was in office and then revived. But nonetheless, uh, he, he did have uh, the reins of power and uh, uh, Nixon met with him and was responsible for two of the arms limitation treaties, the SALT Treaty and the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. Uh, and for that, we must, uh, we must give him a lot of credit. Uh, Nixon also was a surprisingly uh, liberal uh, enactor of legislation. Uh, many, uh, many laws came into effect uh, to uh, protect uh, unfortunate uh, low-income people and so forth across a broad range. One would think of him, oh, he was a right-wing Republican, wouldn't have cared anything about that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. But, but he really wasn't. Although his primary focus was on foreign policy, he also had uh, a, a palette of uh, you know, reasonably uh, important uh, achievements on the domestic front as well. Uh, he had environmental credentials. He uh, started the Environmental Protection Administration, uh, which has lived on, opposed by many kind of pro-business types over the years. Uh, so once again, that doesn't make him a, a doctrinaire right-winger, uh, that, that was an important accomplishment. He uh, initiated major steps, uh, funding and so forth in the war on cancer, uh, got the National Institutes of Health who, who apparently do almost as much research on cancer as almost every place else in the world put together. And that really got started in a heavy way with, uh, with Nixon. Uh, Nixon uh, oversaw the desegregation of southern schools, uh, certainly uh, an inflammatory issue at the time, and seems to have been carried off peacefully. Um, and uh, we all know that the whole issue of uh, the rights of black people in America, even up to the present day, has always been uh, an inflammatory issue, and, and Nixon, made, uh, Nixon made some considerable progress in this area. He lowered the voting age from 21 to 18. It seemed only a, a just thing to do, given that uh, uh, young men are asked to put their lives on the line in the armed forces at age 18, so why should they be able to vote was the argument. I must say I supported that. And then finally, uh, somewhat controversially, he ended the war in Vietnam. Uh, under his tutelage, it was finally abandoned. It was. To be honest, uh, it was a loss, uh, but nonetheless, he extricated America from its most humiliating, unpleasant, and, and divisive war. Uh, there are some who argue he should have done it sooner, but in, in, in any case, he did accomplish that. Well, well there's, there's a pretty good list of accomplishments as well, and uh, I guess that uh, you can understand why there are a lot of supporters for him that say, no, he wasn't as bad as you think. Uh, 
Okay, what's my take on it? Well, I guess I'm a a, a mixture of both. I, I I see in him a a a, a deeply flawed person. His, his paranoia is really his nastiness in many respects makes him not a very likable chap. I mean, he he uh, is a sort of person that that as I said earlier, you probably would have difficulty making friends with. But aren't a lot of politicians like that? I mean. Politicians to be to do what they have to do to get to the top, really, in in any country, uh, have to have some pretty immoral personal characteristics. I would have thought there are very few really principled ones that make it. I can think of a few, but not many. Um, and so, in that respect, uh, he was just a bit more extreme than most. Uh, but uh, but there's no question a flawed individual, but one that had major major accomplishments. Uh, and uh, we've outlined some of those. Uh, he was e extremely capable, and uh, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, he left office on a pretty unpleasant note. Uh, I I kind of feel sorry for him in his memory, uh, but uh, it's just as well that he left. <laughs> okay, so there it is. Uh, I'm sure there will be people. Uh, who disagree with me uh, certainly will take one side or another of this uh, long-standing argument and debate about Richard Nixon. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, give me a like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe, please. Make any suggestions you have for other videos. Hit the notification bell, and I'll see you the next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.